that about you as well. So thank you. Well, you're kind, you're kind to say that, and, and I agree. So three points of a thesis here. Let's, let's get somewhere. All so, right, let's go. And I, I, wrote them, I wrote them down because I thought it would be more okay. succinct. Um, so maybe I should have just tweeted these out. Uh, so three, three points. Number one, from a personal standpoint, I believe God calls me and the Bible teaches me to love everyone. The overwhelming message of the Bible is one of love for every person, regardless of their creed, ethnicity, or sexual passion. And so I believe, number one, God calls me to love everyone. So that's point number one. Point number two, much like a humanist um, believes some behavior is unethical, I believe the, ba the Bible does categorize some human behaviors as sin. Christians would use the word sin. As the creator, these behaviors are in opposition to his character. Authentic love has the responsibility to point people away from what God calls wrong. So that's, that's point number two. Um, and then point number three is I do not believe that disagreement on this issue is equal to hate. And on almost any other issue, someone could say, I disagree, but I don't hate you. Unfortunately, when it comes to the LGBT community, there is no space for disagreement. The act of disagreement is dis considered discriminatory or bigoted. I believe this unwillingness to permit disagreement is detrimental to Western culture, and ultimately it could lead to discrimination, to censorship, and incarceration, we could put people in jail. So those are my three points. Um, I, don't, I don't know what you think of that. The crux of a lot of this is, there's the perception, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, that the wish would be that society would be constructed in a fashion that people who are LGBT wouldn't be able to instantiate their lives in the fashion that they should be able to. They wouldn't be able to live their lives as themselves. So let's say I'm gay, right? So I'm, I'm a lesbian. I fall in love with a woman. I and this is hypothetical. Her. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I just, actually, I mean, a lot I'm of my bisexual. people don't, don't know who you are. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. So hypothetically speaking, I'm gay. I, I'm a lesbian. I wish to marry a woman. And society is constructed in a fashion that doesn't allow that to happen because society deems me being a lesbian as unacceptable. Now, we're lucky in the fact that society does not do that. Now, for us here in Canada and for, for you in the United mm -hmm. States, if you are in love with somebody of the same gender as you, you are free to marry that person. However, this is, where, this is where the complexity and perhaps the nuance comes in. There's a perception, and like I said, you can correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. that many, many Christians would wish for a society that was constructed otherwise, that was constricting mm -hmm. in that fashion, that you were not, that mm -hmm. somebody like me in that scenario, in that hypothetical scenario, would not be able to marry the person that I love and carry on a life with them. And that is scary. If, I, if you, for example, if I, for example, had made a determination, had a disagreement with you, and I, des I determined that all Christians should only be able to marry somebody of the same sex, and I lived my life in a fashion that I donated money mm -hmm. to groups that helped push, to push that as a political agenda, and I perpetuated yeah. that message as much as I could on social media, and I had discussions about how that should be the case, mm -hmm. you would undoubtedly and justifiably mm -hmm. be upset about that because I am attempting mm -hmm. to compel yeah. people and to construct a society mm -hmm. that doesn't allow you to live your life in the fashion that you choose and that you should be able to. Right. Like you would you'd probably be justifiably upset with me in that situation. Yeah, right? no, I, I would be I would be upset. I would want the law change. I wouldn't want to be forced to only have to marry men. Um, coincidentally, th that society would last one generation. <laughs> what what for for what reason do you think that that isn't a bigoted statement against somebody? What if like what why if wouldn't I, it be? Why what, why what, would it be relegated to disagreement? 
as opposed to to bigotry because it's not in any other that's si- the nuance because it's not in any other situation so l- let's let's take it let, let's take something more innocuous like um I, you know, I'm trying to find something that translates across the border. Okay, Tim Hortons. Do you guys have those up there? I love have Tim Hortons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what if great. I said, <laughs> I don't like Tim Hortons coffee, and you mm-hmm. said, I do like Tim Hortons coffee. Am I a bigot for not liking Tim Hortons coffee? Tim Hortons isn't a human being or a group of human beings with inherent rights and value. They're a business. So if you say, I don't like the color purple, which happens to be my favorite color, and I love the color purple, you have a different opinion on something subjective. I don't think that human rights are subjective. So I I, I think that's where the differentiation is. Now, if you said, I don't believe that black people and white people should be able to get married, that's a bigoted statement. If you and say I would you don't like that. the same type of cop, right. So why is it not a bigoted statement to say, I don't believe that a man and a man should be able to get married? Where's your differentiating line that allows one of those statements to be bigoted, but defines the other as not? And it is, and I will admit, it is far more difficult for someone to never exercise sexual um, their sexuality, but God calls some people to singleness. So I would say there's, you know, there's, there's no difference in, in the person that God calls to singleness and the person that, that may be same-sex attracted from, from birth. There's a significant difference, however, because you go through your life with a choice. You, you could have chosen to be celibate or you could have chosen to be married to your wife and be happy. If you're gay... Your only choice from your perspective, given what God says, is unhappiness. That is your only choice. But to hope that, th- with the hope that one day I'll die and then maybe I'll be happy. The, the Christian worldview doesn't determine happiness by what we do. It determines happiness in glorifying God. So if I can bring glory to God, I can find happiness in that. So it doesn't, the, the Christian worldview doesn't find happiness. And yet people don't, sex. though. <laughs> what, like, th- this entire conversation started with, you know, why do people see this as intolerance? Why do people see this as bigotry? Why do people rile against it? And that's, that's the crux of it, I think. That's, that's the well, reason. You're telling people you... to choose on happiness in the hopes that once this life is over, they can be happy then. But you don't have to make that choice. There's a You're fundamental... telling people to make a choice you don't have to make. But I think that, that that position essentially says you can't have happiness unless you have sex. And I don't think that that is, that is true. And, and I wouldn't define happiness that way. And that, and that essentially is what you're saying. That if, if, I, no. if God asks someone to not have sex with someone they want to, then he is asking them to limit their happiness. And, and I wouldn't agree with that presupposition. So what I'm saying, to be clear, is that you and me get to live by, with, without even thinking about it, without even having to question it, without having to fight for it, without having to worry about it, without having to watch people debate about whether or not it's okay, we get to choose partners and go about our life without any impediment, without having to listen to a soul, have a conversation, have a debate, attempt to legislate, attempt to counteract us, Tell us we're abominations. Tell us that the life that we're leading is reprehensible. Tell us that God condemns us for who we are. We don't even have to have that as something that's a contemplative point for even one iota of one second of the time that we exist on this earth. There is, however, a group of people who do. We're debating 
whether or not they should have the right to the same happiness we take for granted right now. And if you could imagine for just one moment living every day of your life being exposed to that type of hardship, what that, what that impact would have on you, what it would be like to exist in a society where you're very right to the same things other people take for granted are consistently, constantly up for debate. For people that don't know, don't even know what it's like to be you. Like, just imagine that for a moment. Be that empathetic. You must be called to be empathetic for even that little, like, just for a moment. Imagine what that must be like when you have no choice but to be who you are. That is why I fight for these types of things, because I couldn't imagine. I couldn't even for a second imagine what it would be like if somebody told me that, that I couldn't choose the partner that I love and spend my life with them while I watch everyone around me get to do it without even having to take a thought about what it's going to mean for them and their life. I think, um, I think what you're saying is important. This is, this is why I wanted Christians to listen to your perspective, because I think there are many Christians that don't even consider what you said. And when I imagine that, because I'm imagining it, that is, that is a big it's thing hard. to ask, Shannon. It's, but, but there's other moments where I know that this God loves me, that he cares for me, and that his way is truly best. And I do well, can not Can you tell need... me why God thinks it's wrong then? Why does God think it's wrong? Well, why does, why does God think? Well, I, God, well, it's kind of a misunderstanding of the nature of God. God created sexuality and he created humanness and he created man and woman to be together from the beginning in the first three chapters of Genesis. So then why uh, does he allow people to be gay and then think it's wrong? Well, I, I think you get to an even more important question, which we could discuss later is the problem of evil. Why would God allow any suffering, any difficulty, any problem in the world um, when, when he had full capacity? And God always gives us a choice. And he did in the garden from the beginning. And I can cannot... be gay, Ben. Say what? Be gay. It's a choice. Be gay right now. Change your mind. Be gay. Well, it's I, a choice, I'm saying, right? No, well, well, you can't. <laughs> well, no, no, no. What you're referring to is being same-sex attracted, which which may not be a choice. But but being gay requires there. There's no one here, so it requires there to be a man here for me to be gay, and that is a choice. The 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 um and and this is where some Christians get this wrong. 